So you're filling it now to what level? Uh, we fill it right to the top. And I think the toughest thing on these is to try and figure out how these three-way the, the stopcock things work. Yeah, for sure, because you want to get rid of all the air, correctly? Correct. Right. Right. We've got right. to. So I can see when it's up like this that we've got the uh, straight through. It's a little different. I think back like this. We're going to stop the treat for Doctor Boyce. So looks like. Okay, uh, can you take a phone number and I'll call him right back? <laughs> Copper Creek? Dr. Creek. Creek. Oh, Dr. Creek. Hi there. From Lakeside or Rivercrest mm -hmm. or Ocean View. Mm -hmm. How appropriate, Dr. Creek. And it's raining. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, we got Sunshine. There's so little light in this room. Can we maybe turn on that over? The, no, that one right there. Yeah, the spotlight. Because I've got to see the column. Okay. It's got to be on my manometer. There you go. Okay, good. There's where we're going to be able to locate that. That's straight through. And this fills our column. Okay. All right. That's straight through. Now, what we'll do right here, you can run this needle directly onto the area there, but we'll just go right in the compartment, just right there. We're in the compartment. Sure, we've got good flow. We've got good flow. Okay, now. We're going to check our compartment pressure. You can see our meniscus is dropping. Dropping on down. Oh, you're good. You're good. I can see the meniscus. Are you feeling any pain with this at all? No, I'm not. Good. Thank you for asking. Good. And see, our, we can tell that the compartment is, has not got a lot of pressure in it. Yeah, when you move your, your muscle, then you can see the meniscus move a little bit. And the higher you go, does it matter if you're at level of, with my leg? Or? Yeah, we should be at the level of your leg right here. Okay. And so we're going to be right in that area right there. Let's see what this measures here. Can you see the number on that? Looks like 29. Mm -hmm. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. So we're we're good. So it leveled out at twenty-nine. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. According to this technique, um, a threshold for suspicion of increased compartment pressures would be above. It'll be above that. Above that, so 30 or 40 or 35. 30, 38 was our limit if we, if we had pressures, and probably had we waited a little bit longer, uh, that meniscus would have dropped farther. Okay, um, and, and so, keeping the instrument at the same level of your needle right. is going to be important in order to not have gravity be the one that's drawing it towards we're, your We're leg. looking for the column from your muscle compartment, and so you need to have the bottom of that about the same level. That's interesting. Yeah. I felt very little discomfort no, with it's that. It's an easy way of doing it, and the va like I said before, the vascular surgeons used to call me They'd usually say, we know you're not on call, but in the morning when you come in, would you run a compartment pressure on so-and-so who's in the ICU? We did a bypass on them last night, and we'd like to know what their compartment pressure is. And uh, 
This brings up an interesting point. I mean, you know, you can think of so many places that don't have access to those fancy machines uh, that can measure that, but mm -hmm. gosh, I can't imagine a, an emergency room or a hospital that doesn't have a lumbar puncture kit available right. to them. So, right. Thank you, Dr. Moore. You're sure for welcome. Yeah. Your experience and expertise. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's just uh, just something that seemed to come up over the years, and I cannot tell you what year that I've thought about this, but uh, I've used it for a long time, probably used it over 30 years.